Oh boy, you can tell we have something different here today. This is the Kukuka Rampage. This is a really big electric bike that comes in two different versions, the Rampage like I have here, and also the Rampage Pro. And both versions of this bike come in blue, red, and also this very neon green. So look, I'm typically a person that doesn't really go for loud colors like this, but it's tastefully done. Um, I would like to see a black version of this bike just for people who are kind of plain like me, but I think these colors definitely do stand out. And I got a lot of people saying they like the way this bike looks so they have that going for them. Now as far as cable management it is a little busy on the front of the bike and I think it could benefit from maybe one or two more kind of tie downs up there but um, in the main part of the bike you will find that most of those cables will be internally routed which is nice and then when you get towards the back going to the motor and also the rear brake you will find some of those cables start to branch out because the back of the frame is a little bit thinner than the front but other than that the cable management is nicely done. And you have an aluminum alloy frame that's going to be holding this bike together along with some very big 26 by 4 inch fat tires that help keep this bike off the ground a little bit so the bike definitely looks bigger than what it feels like when you are riding and i'll cover that here in a little bit but now let's talk about some of the things that are different between the two versions of this bike so the regular rampage comes with a 750 watt buffang rear hub motor and the rampage pro comes with a 1000 watt version of that same motor. And these bikes do have a removable battery that you can use one of the two keys that comes with this bikes to insert that key, unlock it and remove the battery and it's a pretty easy operation. And the batteries come in at 48 volts, but with the Rampage you get a 960 watt hour battery and the Pro comes in at 1176 watt hours. And both of these batteries will take around six hours to fully charge. Now, as far as range, the company says the Rampage will be able to get between 25 and 50 miles and the Rampage Pro will be able to get between 31 and 62 miles. And the company says that the higher end of the range estimates is by using pedal assist and the lower end of the ranges is going to be by using the throttle only. So I will say that I did ride this bike for multiple days here while doing my testing. I did have to charge it up once, but I was riding this thing very hard. I was going very far and I was doing a lot of speed tests. I was using a lot of the throttle as well. So I feel comfortable with the battery for definitely just one single day and not having any type of range anxiety. But again, depending on your weight, the terrain, and different weather factors as far as the wind and stuff like that, your range will vary depending on how you really ride this bike. But ultimately, I think the distance is good. And so that's pretty much all of the differences with these two versions of this bike. But now let's talk about everything that's going to be the same. So this bike does come with dual suspension, one on the front fork and also one right underneath the seat. And this front suspension does have 100 millimeters of travel, so you have a decent range there. And the suspension system is excellent. Um, it's also adjustable as well, so you can fine tune it to your particular needs. And also, if you are going to be going more off-road with this bike, especially with these big fat tires, uh, you can go ahead and open up that suspension to give you a little bit more cushion. And so, yeah, with this dual suspension, you're able to get a really good smooth ride. And I'm doing a little bit of off-roading here as I go over these big bumps like so. And you can see here, the bike handles it with no problem and it's pretty comfortable. You heard some shakiness in my voice because, look, I'm not a daredevil, so I'm always nervous when I do jumps. <laughs> but overall this bike feels really good on and off road and has really good turning radius here with this bike for being a big bike like this it still feels really good i'm able to get up these bumps and i have really good grip in this grass with the uh treading on the tires here it just feels really smooth really secure i feel very comfortable on this bike now you can probably already guess that this bike does weigh a little bit right so it does weigh 81 pounds so that makes it a big boy but it does also support big boys or big people because um, it can support up to 440 pounds for the low capacity so it can definitely take some weight but also does weigh a little bit so uh, this definitely isn't a bike that you're going to want to just be able to easily throw into the trunk of your car but the way they have built and designed this bike it does feel very sturdy and honestly i just noticed that i really don't see a lot of welds on this bike so maybe they're they're hitting up by the paint or whatever but um, it looks like a lot of this is going to be a solid piece that may just be kind of bent you know to get the overall shape of the bike but look again it looks really good uh, looks very clean all of the lines on this bike really make it stand out and oh so here's a picture of the bike with fenders and also a rear rack but it won't be coming with those standard um, they will be part of their indiegogo stretch goal i think if they sell a certain amount they'll throw those in but for right now you'll have to buy those separately after you do buy the bike or just buy it on their website so personally i would like to see at least the fender standard because this is a bike that I think is going to be suited for getting down and dirty with and having those fenders will be good but for right now you'll have to buy those separately. Now this bike does have a 19 watt big headlight in the front and this does
does a really good job at lighting up the path in front of you. And it does have two different running modes. One is gonna be made for like daytime running lights. And then the second mode is gonna be, you know, more high beam and really turning on the full functionality of this light. But I really like the performance of that. Now on the back of the bike, you will find an integrated brake light. So when you press down on the brakes, it'll brighten up a little bit more than normal to indicate that you're braking to people behind you. And also I did find some controls for turn signals on the handlebars, but they weren't working. So I did reach out to the company and they said that they will be removing those controls in the final version and they don't have any plans to add turn signals. So personally, I would like to see turn signals on this bike along with that integrated brake light. I think that would be great for when you are riding this bike in the road. But for now, I'll be missing out on that. Oh, and I almost forgot. I really love the controls to be able to turn on the headlight and the taillight. So instead of having to press and hold down on the button, which they still do have one next to the controls to be able to go up and down the pedal assist, they have this little toggle right here. So you can press down once to turn on the headlight and the taillights, and then you can press down to turn it off. So that's way easier and way quicker, especially if you are like pulling into like a parking garage or something that's very dark right away. Now the display on this bike is a four inch color display and I've used this display on another bike and I really like it. One from the startup animation, but two how the uh, presentation of all the different things as far as like the levels of pedal assist and your speed and also your odometer and even your battery life on here looks really good. And also to be able to get into the settings to be able to change different things is very easy using this display setup. And so in the manual, they do have uh, instructions on how to be able to change all types of things with this bike very easily. And just so you know, the screen does perform well in bright sunlight. Now, I don't have any issues with the handlebar grips. They feel very grippy, feel very comfortable. And on the right hand side of the handlebars, you will find a twist throttle to be able to use. And then also you will find a seven speed Shimano shifter there to be able to go up and down your gears very smoothly. And something else that helps with the smoothness of the ride with this bike is the fact that it does have a torque sensor. Now, typically electric bikes come with cadence sensors, but torque sensors are going to be used in conjunction with your pedal assist. So when you are pedaling a heavy bike like this, this torque sensor makes that sensation of pedaling feel really good and feel like it's working with the motor incredibly well and very smooth, especially when you are going up hills. And with a big bike like this, you definitely want all the help to make it feel like a normal bike when you are riding it. And so this is a pretty decent hill that I'm going up right now. And I mean, everything feels really good. This bike feels really, really, really good. I keep saying this in this review, but it's a very natural riding experience that gives you just the right amount of power when you do need it. And I do see another hill. I'm gonna go up here real quick. A little bit of a tiny hill, but you can see it has a little bit of steepness to it. And boom, just like that, no problem. And it was a stray cat that just scared me. <laughs> oh, and also going from using the throttle like I am now to pedaling, it's a very smooth transition. Sometimes on these bikes, when you do that, there's either like a hesitation or a pause and the bike kind of has to like figure out what you're doing. This one is very natural. I'm using throttle again, but I'm gonna switch over the pedal. And you can see here, it's just, well, maybe you can't see it, but trust me, it's a very good smooth transition going between those two modes. All right, so at this time, let's go ahead and get to my speed and braking test. So this bike does come with hydraulic disc brakes, which are great by the way. So I'm gonna go ahead and tell you that now, but also we're gonna test how fast I'm able to go using this 750 watt motor. Okay, so now for the speed test. So this bike does ship to you as a class three electric bike, meaning that it can get up to 28 miles per hour. Now again, the pro version of this bike is rated to get up to 32 miles per hour, but it is pretty simple to unlock the speed further in this bike just by going into settings and changing a couple of things and all of the instructions are in the manual that comes with this bike. But my first test is just going to be using the throttle only and let me get turned around here and let's get this thing going in three two one boom all right takeoff speed is pretty decent and like i always say in these uh, videos i do weigh about 220 pounds my camera backpack probably has like i don't know 15 pounds of gear and stuff in it but already we're at 20 miles per hour on my gps app and we're at 23 miles per hour on the bike's display and we're at 24 miles per hour, 25 miles per hour on both of these the displays here, 26 miles per hour on the bike's display. Got a little bit of a bump. All right. 27 miles per hour on both of the displays here. So that is really great just using the throttle only and not using the uh, pedal assist. And 28 miles per hour on my GPS app and 28 miles per hour on the bike's display. Now let's test out the braking. All right, 
and I was pretty kind of generous with the braking. I didn't slam on them, but I felt like I had a lot of stopping power with these brakes. And as you can hear, they are whisper quiet. All right, so now for my pedal assist speed test. So let's get this bike turned around and let's get this thing going in three, two, one, boom. All right, so the torque sensor allows this pedaling to be very, very responsive. And let me give it a little bit more juice here. We're at 17 miles per hour in my GPS app. Okay, now it's working. <laughs> We're at 19 miles per hour and 23 miles per hour already. Let me give it a little bit more power with my legs. 26 miles per hour, little bump there. And down the straightaway, let me give it 27 miles per hour, 28, 29, 30. Woo, all right. Let's test out the braking. Okay, so not bad at all. So with pedal assist, my maximum speed I was able to get according to the GPS app on my phone was 31 miles per hour. But even better, when you do just want to use this like an electric moped, getting up to 28 miles per hour just using the throttle is great as well. And this bike has also performed very well on the hills that I have taken it on. Using the throttle, I mean, it was a little slow, but definitely when you use pedal assist, I was able to get up a couple of steep hills with no problem. Again, that torque sensor makes everything feel very organic when you are pedaling. So this bike for the 750 watt version has a decent amount of power to it, but I definitely can expect more with that 1000 watt motor version if you do elect to buy that one. Oh, and let's talk about this seat. So this seat is very nicely done. I like how it is incorporated into the frame of the bike where on this top tube here, you will find that it goes down at an angle, but then once it reaches the seat, it starts to go up slightly. So this makes getting on and off of this bike really easy. Okay, so look, if I had to wrap up my experience of this Rampage Pro, I will say for being a big bike, it rides like a normal bike. And I do appreciate that. And this bike just feels very finely tuned. I mean, with the braking, the suspension, um, the speed, the motor, um, the pedal assist, that torque sensor, the display, everything is very nicely done on this bike. But now as far as pricing, the regular retail price of this bike for the Rampage version will be $3,399 and the Rampage Pro will come in at $3,999 but this bike will be available on Indiegogo first and it will have a discount price for the Rampage at $22.99 and the Rampage Pro will cost you $26.99. And the company says there will be some extra discounts and stuff with the Indiegogo campaign. So look, the prices are up there, especially for the normal price, but I feel like those discounted Indiegogo prices are really good for what you're getting for this caliper of bike. And I have yet to use a $4,000 electric bike, so I don't know how exactly this will compare to those, but I will say I have used bikes that cost around $3,000 that can go a little bit faster than this bike, maybe around 35, 36 miles per hour, and also might come with dual batteries to give you even more range. But none of those bikes have kind of the, the fine tuning and the fit and finish that this bike has, especially with all those things that I've mentioned before. So it's a little bit of a trade-off. And also some of those other bikes do kind of operate more like electric mopeds or electric motorcycles. So it's kind of dependent on what type of style of bike that you are going for. But I highly suggest you take advantage of those Indiegogo prices because I think those prices, even when you look at other bikes around that price range this bike stacks up very well and actually is going to be outperforming some of those bikes in multiple areas so anyway i'll leave some links down below to all the different links for the website indiegogo page all that stuff about this bike that will be down in the description of this video but also i do want to know what you think so leave a comment down below and let me know your thoughts about this bike and also if you have any questions about it but like always if you did like this video go ahead and give this video a like and also make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell if you want to see more videos on my electric bikes and pretty much anything else in tech on this channel but i'm out of here thanks for watching this video and i will catch you later peace